What's up YouTube? My name is Lisa. Thank you so much for checking out this video. T today I'm going to talk about the five drop options uh, that you could run in mid range hunter, uh, like a general game plan of what you want to do with your deck, when you want to run what uh, five drops, and when you want to uh, tweak your five drops against certain opponents. So let's dive straight in. Um, I'm skipping explosive shot. I think other options are better, like Reefus bites. Uh, it's very position uh, positioning dependent, so I don't think it's any good. Princess Huron. Uh, it's a pretty cool card. I like it. I crafted it uh, a while ago, um, but I believe the problem with this card uh, is the general uh, plan, the game plan you have when playing mid range hunter. Typically, you want to develop a, a decent board in the first four turns of the game, uh, and after turn four, you really want to transition into a more aggressive approach, uh, put your opponent on the clock. Um, and I don't think Princess Huron does that as well. It typically just provides with more value, but I don't think more value is what mid range hunter needs and if you want more value you can run other options uh, in your deck um, so I don't think this deserves a, a place in a, a typical mid range hunter list um, Starving Buzzard. Starving Buzzard obviously got nerfed like ages ago. Uh, I think this is too slow uh, when running a mid-range hunter list. Uh, you could make it work with Quest Hunter, but Quest Hunter has proven to be uh, a lot weaker than mid-range hunter at the moment. You can pull off some pretty neat combos with it. You can refill your hand pretty well, especially compared uh, one paired with Unleash the Hounds and a lot of one drops and Tulfir Warden. Uh, but I don't see this having a place in a typical mid range hunter list. Tulfir Warden. I believe this might actually be worth considering as a one off. Uh, it kind of does the same as Hammett Jungle Hunter in a sense that it does improve your uh, draws. Um, it increases the chances of getting a Savannah Heimane on turn 6 and um, it has obviously some impact on how many and which one drops you want to run. Uh, you can get abusive sergeants out uh, if you are uh, running some peak you probably want to run this and couple it with like Raptor Hatchling uh, that again gives a lot of value but I don't think Mint Range Hunter is a typical value deck um, but yeah if you're running uh, Timberwolves uh, it's obviously pretty good to combo with anything you have on the board which you should have by turn 5 uh, or turn 6 when you play uh, the Timberwolves uh, you can fetch your Jeweled Macaws to get some more gas in the tank um, when uh, going into like turn 6, 7, 8 so that's pretty nice. I don't believe running two is worth it because the body isn't that strong. It doesn't have a beast stack, uh, and it decreases chances. Like if you play two, you, I don't think you pull four one drops like that often when you play two of these because you don't want to run that many one drops in mid range hunter. But I do believe it's uh, it it does have a solid uh, spot as a one off. So the Rhino. Well, the Rhino is obviously a great card, and uh, it actually was maybe a bit sleeper OP. Uh, people started playing it again in the Hunter list since Journey, Journey to Angora Crater came out. Uh, it's amazing with the Death Rattle options and mid range Hunter has available, like Rat Packs, uh, maybe in Festive Wolf. Um, it's pretty cool when it uh, sticks. Uh, it's amazing if you can charge a Savannah High Main and you can suicide it and anything that. The two two small hyenas get charged as well. It's all great stuff, and it demands an answer. Uh, so it it fits a fast game plan. Um, you pretty much want to combo stuff if you're running Thunder Rhino. You probably want to run a uh, the scavenging hyenas as well. Uh, so it's all in all a really solid card. I think this is great as a one off. Uh, having two in your hand can be a little bit clunky because it has only two attack. So let's move. Oh, wait a minute, second. Let's talk about Knuckles for a bit because Knuckles hasn't seen a lot of play in last season before Journey to Angora came out. But in today's meta and today's environment, I believe Knuckles actually has a place. I didn't get to crafting him yet. Um, but the thing is, you want to develop, like I said earlier, you want to develop a board early on and then start chipping away at your opponent, put him on the clock uh, using your hero power uh, and finish your opponent off before you run out of steam. And Knuckles really does a great job at controlling the board well, chipping in face damage, uh, so it really fits the game plan well. Um, it obviously has great synergy uh, with Dynomancy, and people have been reaching uh, Legend with Dynomancy decks. 
uh, it's a pretty board centric approach it's not the most aggressive approach uh, but I can I do believe this is pretty good in a mid range mid range type of mi uh, hunter deck that's really board centric and if you're running uh, that type of deck you probably want to run knuckles as well as swamp king dread so let's move over to the neutrals um just don't run big game hunter honestly and uh, the body just gets removed and we do have stuff like deadly shot so i don't think it's running uh, secret hunter might find this card interesting but it's not yeah it, it just doesn't cut it um but bitter tide hydra on the other hand is pretty amazing it's a great addition to midrange hunter it's a great aggressive option so if you are uh, the aggressive type of midrange hunter you definitely want to slot those in it's notably weak versus mages and it's also really bad in the hunter mirror match um, but it basically demands answers and if it doesn't get answered uh, it can win you the game on the spot um, and if it gets answered uh, with removal it's not as bad because you don't g get to take like 3 damage for your hero uh, when it gets pinged a lot so when it gets removed it's not the worst it paves the way for savannah high mains um, and when they trade a board in it well then they still invested a lot to get this card removed um, you do want to be the aggressor in the matchup when you play this uh, and it can be pretty bad when you fall behind but I do believe this should be played uh, when you're playing an aggressive type of mid-range hunter deck <coughs> excuse me um, so what do we have at least the trailblazer unfortunately I didn't pull her yet out of the back um, but I actually do believe this can be really solid in mid-range hunter. Uh, the body is decent, it's 5-5 five five for 5 mana. And what it does, it adds more gas to your tank. And, and that's honestly, if you're going late, that's something you need when you're playing mid-range hunter. Um, so I think it can be a great inclusion. Um, so that's, yeah, if you have it, just feel free to put it in it's uh, it's pretty decent finja the flying star i'm not going to talk about to it too much because if you're running the finja package uh, you're not running the typical mid-range hunter i do believe it can work i played in the season before journey to Enguro hit life uh, i actually uh, climbed from rank five zero stars to somewhere in the mid rank four and uh, with the finja curator mid-range hunter list uh, I consider that to be an achievement, uh, considering the state of Hunter at the time. Uh, it can be run, but it's not typical mid-range Hunter, so I won't go into too much detail. Uh, Harrison Jones. I can uh, do believe it's a pretty decent tech option, but we do have uh, all kinds of oozes these days, and I actually do believe those are better. They do the jo job better. It's a really nice uh, this card gives you card draw, because Hunter doesn't have a lot of good card draw options. But honestly, most weapons played in today's meta don't have that much durability. Uh, when Doomhammer comes back in aggressive shaman list, this might be worth running again. Um, but until the time, I prefer my tech options and my uh, disarm options to be like 2 or 3 mana. Uh, Leroy Jenkins uh, can be run, but honestly, the meta slowed down and we lost some... Um, some aggressive options when the 4-4 charge arcane golem got nerfed uh, so i don't think it's possible to reliably close out games on turn 5 uh, and obviously when you don't close out the game on turn 5 uh, it's uh, a pretty big drawback to give your opponent two whelps because they will deal with leroy uh, like immediately so i do think at the moment this is outclassed by other five drop options um nesting rock is also a really interesting addition it's great versus aggressive decks uh, like uh, Pirate Warrior, uh, some aggressive rogue list, maybe some aggressive shaman list. It has great synergy uh, with Dynomancy for a board centric approach and it's also a really good versus priest because priests usually have a lot of trouble removing anything with 4 attack. Um, because Shadow Word Death and Shadow Board Pain uh, really require something to be yeah, 3 mana or lower or 5 mana or higher. Um, so when you're facing a lot of aggressive decks and you're facing some priests on the ladder, this is definitely a good addition to mid-range hunter for the climb to legend. Um, what do we have here? I used to run second rate bruiser last season, but at the moment I think nesting rock is just flat out better. Um, they're both conditional, but this, this doesn't have a beast. I don't think it's worth running at the moment. Spike Hawk Rider. I want to talk about this card really briefly. Um, it's not in your typical mid-range hunter list, but 
when you're in a meta with a lot of taunt warriors and a lot of elemental decks uh, which run dark creepers this card can actually be quite amazing um, uh, it gains charge it deals with the dark creeper right away and it even survives so when you want to uh, yeah play a mid-range runter uh, deck and just say fuck you without saying it to any taunt warrior you face uh, you might consider putting this in actually uh, Stampeding Kodo is another very interesting option when you're facing a lot of taunt warriors. If you're uh, uh, facing a lot of them, you just might run two Stampeding Kodos and and two Spike Hook Riders. Um, it's great versus uh, notably the Ellie Smith. I forgot what's the complete name, but uh, those tend to be really annoying to remove for hunters because we run a lot of tokens uh, and our warriors just gain like a crap ton of armor uh, but Stampede and Kodo deals with it uh, really nicely and really clean uh, it's a bit of a defensive card because of its stats uh, but is uh, that makes it uh, like half decent in aggressive matchups as well uh, because in turn 5 you really want to drop cards which have uh, impact like right away so Definitely a good card. Um, uh, it it has like a completely different approach to mid range hunter than uh, mid range hunter list with stuff like bitter tide hydra. Uh, but I believe it's a very solid drop. So strangled Thorn tiger. I think this is actually the default five drop mid range hunter wants to run right now. I do believe we need like three five drops at least, uh, or probably just three. Uh, and I think strangle thorn tiger is a really solid option. Uh, basically, you you want to play this unless there's a strong reason to play other stuff. Like if you're playing a lot of priest and a lot of aggressive decks, you you prefer the uh, nesting rocks. Um, if you're facing a lot of warriors and freeze mages, you want to run the Stampini Kodo, but this card is just really solid. It will likely survive. It even survives stuff like Flame Strike. Um, and it's a great Houndmaster target, and you can give this Wind Fear with the new 2 drop, so that's all amazing stuff. Uh, if you don't know what to run, just go with 2 Strangletorn Tiger and a Rhino, uh, and you're probably set. So, what else do we have? I think we covered them all, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's about it. I think a starting point should be Strangletorn Tiger and two Strangletorn Tigers and a Rhino. I think that's just really solid. You can't go wrong with that uh, unless you decide to somehow not run red packs. Um, and just, yeah, just see what you face. Just start climbing uh, the rank ladder. And you, you can adjust on the fly if you're running into a lot of uh, priests on a particular la uh, day. You know, just uh, yeah, replace a rhino or a strangled or tiger w uh, with something else. Um, I think it's a great uh, the five mana slot is a great slot to have some flexibility to really adjust your deck on the meta. Uh, I think that really can help you climb. Um, so that concludes it for this uh, episode, for this compendium. Uh, if you liked it, if you learned a thing or two, just uh, leave a like below. It really helps me out. R really appreciate it if you do that. Um, and j it really helps the YouTube algorithm pick up the videos and uh, yeah, help me build this channel. And also stay tuned for the next compendiums. I'll be doing a uh, mid-range hunter compendium on every mana slot. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what mana slot you want to see covered next. I probably uh, will be doing one video every weekend since I got a new job in real life. Uh, I wanted to say unfortunately, but hey, it's kind of nice. It gives me money. Okay. <laughs> so my name is Lisa. Thank you so much for watching again. And I hope to see you guys all when I launch my next video.